that was where the first shot was fired between the war and between the states, our, quote, civil war. And so we stepped onto that little island there where the port was, and we listened to the tour guide talk. And as she was going on and telling her speech and talking about the pride of the people and all that stuff, and then she talked about that we could have, as she's wrapping up her little tour, one nation under God. No, excuse me. It's hard not to say it that way, but she said, so we could have one nation, and she paused, with liberty and justice for all. And she admitted under God. I paused for a second. Hmm. And, and it was almost like, it almost came out like it did me without thinking. But she didn't say it. And later on, Melly and I were touring the whole fort and seeing the rubble that was all there and questioning ourselves and going, I'm going to go ask her. You know, did, did she choose to do that or did somebody tell her she had to do it that way? So we walked up there together and you know, we complimented her on how good the talk was and appreciated things. But she said, just like to know, um, just for curiosity, was that your choice or were you told when you got to the part where you talk about all men are created and we have one nation, but you didn't say under God. Is, was that your choice to admit that? Or she said, no, I was told not to put that part in. She said, no, I, I, I'd like to, but I'm told not to. And she went on with her, a nice general excuse to keep from getting in trouble. Of, well, there's a plurality of different beliefs in our country, et cetera, et cetera. Uh -huh. so, okay. Yeah. What was interesting was as we went through some of the different displays there at the port, that there was a brochure there that they had after the war had ended when they came back and settled things five days, days after the, the peace treaty was signed. And on the back side, the whole back page of the brochure was words from Psalms. And there on that last little section was verse 20, or rather chapter 20, we just read a while ago here, that some trust in horses and chariots, but we trust in God. And I thought of how ironic it is that they knew fully well about that 200 years ago, but today we can't mention God in our country. And you may be bothered by that. It does bother me at times. And, and maybe you're stirred up by all this process that's been advertised and all our politics and stuff and the voting and what's going on, especially in the next couple of days. But as I look at what God is calling us to be as Christians, there's not much said in the New Testament about what politics is right and which one's wrong. And I, I've got my sides and I have my views. But I think we'll get real far off base if we don't realize that we don't need to be trusting in horses and chariots and solutions that a government is going to hand us. Because our victory is going to be with God. Now, come Tuesday, somebody's going to be elected as president and vice president and all different ramifications of all places. But whoever gets in there, we're still going to have the same country we had the next day. Some things will change, possibly. But we're still going to have the issues of morality, immorality, and, and, and so many more things, greed, envy, and, and so much more. See, the marks of a discipleship isn't focused toward an earthly kingdom. It doesn't fit. Our trust is in what God can do. We want to make an impact in this nation. You'll do it more effectively by who you are on the inside than you will by casting a vote. Not cast mine. And I have my persuasions. But our victories are gone. And we ought to pray for defeat and we ought to work toward that. And as a disciple of Jesus Christ, I've got a job and a cause to do. 
And my cause is to fight against Satan and all the things that he's doing with this world. In all the things. Both in this country and any other place I have to put my feet. God calls, calls us to stand up for causes. And he calls us to trust in him. And if we will call upon him, God will do it. And if we will trust in him, we'll be able to do those things. Because the victory is with God and not anything else. We have a great congregation here. A great congregation that does so many things. Don't lose your joy. Don't lose your strength. Don't lose the encouragement that we're able to give to one another. Hold on to your resolve and your devotion to God. And be reminded that there are things that we can do to make an impact eternally in the lives of individuals. And those are causes really worth fighting. Look around and think about souls. Not just 401ks and everything else. But something that lasts way beyond that. And designed to be devoted toward that. And a heart that's trusting in Jesus. And you'll be a whole lot more satisfied with what's going on. Because you'll be making the impact that God wants you to make. So look at your life. And for justice being made, talk to God about it. Something not right publicly, come down front. If you've never made a commitment to Jesus, this is a great time. Matter of fact, Better than ever. It's today. It's the day of salvation, the scripture says. And we invite you to come and be baptized if you've not done that. And give yourself to Christ while we stand in self-existence.